Uh, so okay. first off, before before we get started, right? So before we before we dive into this, right? <laughs> this is all content that should make it. I want to introduce the panel tonight. We have Matt Henry, he's a Hall of Famer with Hashtag Sports. We got Mike Apex Double Zero up at the top of your screen. Uh, he's also a Hall of Famer. Uh, because they're Hall of Fame members, they got the invite to uh, come on with me and let's talk mock drafts. We never do mock drafts here at Hashtag. But uh, this is a great opportunity to talk about it. So, uh, Mike, you meant you just mentioned something. You think Bean is going to acquire as many of those mid-round picks as possible. I actually disagree with you. And I disagree with you for a reason that might show up. I mean, different mock drafts will be different, right? You could trade away picks in mock drafts and acquire 8,000 picks along the way. So you got to try and remain as realistic about this whole scenario as possible. But the fact of the matter is those middle-round picks – do you even have room for those players right now? Obata. I didn't, right? say, I, I didn't say I think he's going to. I said I would like to see uh, him. Okay. There's a difference because <laughs> I don't know if we have the room. Yeah. You know, with, with, bringing, with basically running it back mm-hmm. and the, the, um, all the different free agents we brought in, even though they're all veteran minimums and they can be cut, we brought in a lot of depth. We brought a lot of linebacker depth in. We brought in some offensive line depth. Um, you know, and we're still waiting to find out uh, Botker's coming back. Mm-hmm. So, you know, um, there, there are some areas that we're missing, and I have a feeling that's what that's what we're going to focus in the draft. Obata. Yeah, Matt, where do you sit on that? Do you see do you see the Bills making a lot of moves in this draft, or is this one where you can kind of sit at the board and just let the board come to you because you know your scouting is better than the, than the you know, the 29 teams in front of you? Well, I should Look, say 29 teams because the Jets and the Dolphins got a couple swings at it. So are you, is, your draft, is your board better than the 20-plus teams ahead of you? Well, I mean, first of all, the uh, Jets and Dolphins are pretty much in the top five again. So they can have fun <laughs> of that. So, I mean, no, I mean, what to go on Mike's point, I have faith in, you know, being in what he does because of the stuff they did us with Bass, with Hodgins, with mm-hmm. even uh, Dane Jackson mm-hmm. in the uh, seventh. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, like, I would like to see a couple more picks, but if he doesn't make them, I mean, I'm not going to be mad. And if we trade at 30, which, I mean, I would like to see us trade 30 with maybe Philly and still get a <laughs> Yeah, Ertz. Ertz. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking Ertz. And this way, we can still help out our offense, even though I would like to see um, us to go on the um, other side of the ball. Obata. I'll be honest with you. Unfortunately, I do not know of a single mock draft simulator that allows you to, allows you to trade <laughs> players and picks. Uh, so, unfortunately, if you're looking for Buffalo to trade down with Philly or trade up with Philly, however you want to work that, um, unfortunately, players can't be included. Obata. All right. So with that being said, why don't we get moving into the mock draft? Um, So as this is just so we're all talking about the same thing, we're going to use PFF's mock draft simulator. We're going to use their basic settings, but we're going to move the speed to fast. We're going to control only the Buffalo Bills. Now you can do this on your own and control every team if you want. Um, You can make trades with teams. You can offer teams trades. I think it's up to five times you can offer a trade if you're looking to trade in and trade out Um, so we can do that we are going to leave it at the default settings which is just care for positional value right in the middle randomness well i mean when when the raiders are drafting we should probably put that up to more but we can't control that for (laughs) (laughs) Uh, draft needs we're there and public versus the pff board just to be clear about that what that is is it's the public adp so we're like us buffalo bills fans who have been pounding this mock draft simulator where were they, what position were they drafting versus the pff big board okay um so that's how this is going to be done we're going to walk through this uh you know we'll give each of our panelists the opportunity to walk through their mock draft make trades see how it all comes out and talk about the grade afterwards again we're just using pff just because it's you know they give great numbers uh, but I, Mike had said off the air, he's not the biggest fan of their, of their physical breakdown of the players. I don't disagree there, um, but the information is phenomenal. Like, you really can't argue with the data PFF puts out there. How usable is all of it? Well, I think you can use a lot of it to make your own arguments for things, but yep. that's what's fun about football is all this stuff is out there and finding different ways to try and get an advantage in an argument. PFF is definitely the leader in that, right? So um, big, I do like PFF because the information is unique. 
Um, and, I, and I dig that, right? And besides, I don't want to have to watch 14 games of film on a center and grab <laughs> out his pass and run guard. So, so I, I, I appreciate you. Yeah, I, 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 I use PFF data. Yeah. I don't listen to their analysis. Yeah, I agree with you there. I agree with you there. <laughs> I mean, that's just the way it is. Yeah, I agree with you there. All right. Obata. Um, and before we get started, we want to thank uh, Mr. Rogers Holmes. They're our sponsor for this and every video. Uh, you can catch Sean Rogers, our relocation guide at mrrogersholmes.com. If you're thinking about relocating to Arizona, don't call a local agent to find a realtor out there. Just call Sean directly. Let him know hashtag sent you. Uh, listen, it's always sunny in Arizona, or at least what I'm told. Uh, and the beverages for tonight, guys. Do you have any beverages of choice before we get moving? I'm drinking water. What? I'm yeah. drinking water. It's just what I had in the room when I when I logged on. Water. Matt, what? Matt, are you drinking yeah. anything at all? Yeah, um, I got some uh, Coke with me, so. You know. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, Coca Cola. I am on Flying Bison Buffalo Peach White Ale tonight. Uh, little little soft, fruity beer. It's actually quite delicious. I cannot do beer. Nope. Can't do it. Neither can, neither can Paul. That's why he does the fruity beer. <laughs> Touche, sir. Touché. All right, so let's head to the draft room. So very first, before we get started, uh, Matt, we'll start with yours, uh, and then Mike will move to yours. So, uh, Matt, are there any teams – are you looking to move the 30th pick? Are there any teams before the draft that you want to talk to? There- I'm going to keep uh, – just uh, – Keep it the way it is. I mean, I think we're still going to get a good player at uh, 30. Obata. You were looking for Samuel. He yeah. is still on the board. He's been ranked as the 29th overall player. ADP's had him taken right about 40th, so pretty close. Are you interested in trading back in hopes that you could still get him, or are you willing to take the pick at 30 and just call it a day? Um. Well, the only one that I would be trading with would actually be the um, – he goes at a 37, but since he's there now, I'm just going to take him now. Okay. All right. So Samuel will be your pick. Let's lock that one in. Obata. Um, you no. know, a second round player in a, in a McDermott system is not a guaranteed starter. If you're a first round player, you're expected to start. If you're drafted in the second round, you're, the expectation for you to contribute is there, but the expectation for you to start is not. So, right. you know, I, it, if you think that's the best value on the board, uh, we can definitely lock it in for you. Yep. So I saw um, Hamster, I think, down there. So oh, I, yeah. I saw Hamster. Yep. Rated at 129 by PFF. No love. Well, there's, there's, there's a reason for that. And it's actually, it's actually not just PFF because TDN has, has a mock late, too. It's because he has red flags because he's coming off of uh, ACL tears. He yep. only played two games in 2020, yep. and he didn't look the same in the two games that he did the previous season. Well, I mean, the fact of the matter is that was a long time ago now, right? That was, that was a long time ago. And we also have facilities that can help, Yeah, you know. Well, you said his ACL injury was a long time ago? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was at, at the at end this of the 2019 season. Yeah, at this point, yeah, it was a long time ago. You know, um, it, it, I get it, right? I get it. Mm-hmm. The issue that I see there, right, is I'm, I've never been the biggest fan of safeties out of FSU, right? I've just, I've never gotten there, right? Corners, sure. Safeties, I've just never gotten there. I don't know. Yeah, Darwin James is just horrible. I, there's Sorry, exceptions just, to every rule. Yeah. Exceptions to every rule. <laughs> exceptions to every rule. But name me one before that. Name me one before that, Mike. Center. Center, yeah. Yeah, you're gonna take the center. Yeah, I'm taking center. I'm, I'm taking center. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that makes a lot of that makes a lot of sense here. So that means the next pickup is at pick ninety three. Well, again, if we take a look at what's out there, so your positions that you were looking at before probably still need to look at an edge guy, right? Mm-hmm. Realistically, there's probably a pretty good opportunity to trade back and still get these guys that are currently mm-hmm. listed up as your edge defenders. If you're looking at uh, safeties or linebackers, again, 
Uh, you know, from a safety perspective, Jamar Johnson's still on the board. That this would be a totally fine time to take him. I uh, probably not. If you're going to trade, probably not going to stay there for too much longer. Um, would this be a little bit of a jump for uh, for Hamza? It would be, but your next pick is 161st. So you're going from 93 to 161. So you could trade back and try and fill that gap and still get some value with him, or you can just pull the trigger now if that's a player you're really interested in. I mean, it is, but I mean, knowing that we're at what, uh, 161 next? Yeah, there's yeah. no way he's going to make it. No, there's not. Um, uh, and I say there, there's even a debate between Hamza and Divine Diablo. Who? Depending on what you want, want, want that player to do. Because Divine Diablo is that Shaq Thompson big nickel. Yeah, 6'3", you know? 230. Yeah, absolutely. You know? and, and he has fantastic man coverage. Mm-hmm. Hamza is that, you know, positionless defender. Mm-hmm. He, he can play safety. He can play box. He can play slot. So it really depends on what you want him to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think one of the issues that you have with um, – that's kind of unique to Buffalo – uh, Divine is, if you look at his limitations and then say, well, what if he were to play linebacker? It's not the same conversation as, well, can he play safety at the NFL level, right? His right. limitations really do fit more as a nickel linebacker uh, than they would as ever playing safety. The, the fact of the matter is he's not incredibly quick. Um, he's not going to chase anybody down, but he's a big boy and he can cover fine if you're asking him to cover tight ends, right? That, he's going to be totally fine in that realm. If you're asking him to cover, you know, um, any NFL third receiver, I think you're probably asking a bit much, right? But if you're asking him to cover any tight end in the league, he's going to be completely fine there. Not, no he's, a, he's a value brand, Shaq, Shaq uh, you know, he's a value brand. Store Shaq. brand? Yep, store store brand. Store, yep, store. yep, the store brand. Jack Thompson. That's what he is. I mean, I love him, and he brings the nasty, though. That's the thing I love most about him. Mm-hmm. It's something I think the Bills are missing, is we need someone that brings Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. But See, Andy, this, is your, this is your mock draft, it is so I will. So, stay away. <laughs> See, but here's the thing, because you do bring up, bring up a good point. Titans killed us last year. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I mean, the Dolphins twice, the Chiefs twice, Mm-hmm. The Patriots just got the top two tight ends in the league for probably a huge overpayment, but hey, I'm not there. writing right. the checks. Yeah. And and I know like everyone has a huge thing for Hamza just because of the name, but I mean, come on, who doesn't? It, mm-hmm. It's uh, Hamza. Who doesn't like hearing uh, John Murphy say Hamza? <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to take Hamza because I like the All name right. Hamza. Okay. But no, uh, but no, but I mean, I think he can learn under both Poyer and Hyde mm-hmm. and still like come in and break plays and actually do something like uh, Dane Jackson. Possibly. Well, and I, I actually think they have a role for him this year and it'd be, it'd be that Buffalo nickel, big nickel, mm-hmm. dime linebacker. I know Paul hates the word big nickel or Buffalo nickel. So dime linebacker, big nickel. Positionless, positionless safety, the third safety, call it what you want to call it. I think they have a role for him this year as he learns from – I don't think he would play the single high like Hyde. I think he's more of a Poyer replacement. Right. So, I'm lying. Well, and I think if you're drafting a safety in the third, fourth, fifth, sixth round, um, which the Bills have not been shy about adding young safeties to this roster and just seeing where it went, right? Jaquan Johnson's a perfect example. Mm-hmm. Like, we've seen safeties walk in and out of this team probably more than people realize, right? Uh, but there's been a lot of safety transaction on this roster over the last three seasons. The fact to me, right, just as a simple fact, is if you're drafting somebody in the third round, you're not expecting them to play for you immediately. You're fine at safety, right? right. You're going to talk about a package player that's going to have to go out and earn their earn their keep, and that's there's nothing wrong right. with Well, right. exactly, because, um, well, well, that's what we do in Buffalo is, like, we actually make players – Oh. Well, one of my draft crushes is at the top of the board. Herbert? No, Bobby oh. Brown. Evans? Oh, Bobby Brown. Um, I, I get it. I get it. All right. All right, so hold on. So, so can you go to the um, cornerbacks? 
corners. For one sec, yes. Yep. yep. Trill so, Williams from Syracuse. Yeah. Um, Griffin from USC. Shakur Brown from Michigan State is your top three. Um, again, right around this area. Bryce Thompson, again, fits right around this area, not with ADP, but based off of PFF's draft class. Um, so those guys will probably be available in a little bit. Uh, they'll probably be available at 174, 174 because you do have a pick coming up in 13 picks. So you okay, have okay. one and then, then you do have another pick in 13 picks. Right. Because I'm looking for a slot type corner that could possibly fit in somewhere. Where is, gonna, a couple... where is he going to play with? You taking Samuel and Hamsa? Where do you see him fitting in if you dropped another corner? Mm, that's a good question. I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm just asking. Like down the line, I can see it because this, you know, we we have Levi on yeah. one year. We we have um, this is the contract year for um, Tom. So I could see I could see where his thought process was. I'm yeah. just thinking you can't just look at future. You have to look at now as well. Where yeah, where's yeah, he gonna yeah. fit? Where's he gonna fit? Mm-hmm. No, I mean, like, that's a good point as well, because I'm thinking, you know, like, two, three years down the line here. Yep, I get it. Well, I mean, I mean you're, in the, you're in the fifth round. So, Bean and McDermott have a tendency to want guys who can contribute on special teams in round four and five, right? Mm-hmm. That's, that's their idea. Right. And typically, those are corner safeties and linebackers. Those are typically your guys that are going to contribute on special teams. So, um, you know, I don't think you're going down the wrong path if that's what you were thinking. No, I mean... I mean, like, I can see where you guys are coming from because, of course, like, we are in a win-now mode. And, Mm -hmm. you know, of course, like, we don't have five years of Josh Allen rookie deal. This is the last year of Josh Allen rookie. Yeah, it's it's real expensive real quick. It's about to get real expensive. It's about to be 23 next year. Yeah, yeah, Uh, at minimum. I mean, unless unless they – unless they offer him and then sign it to an extension. We've talked about that on the channel. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, you guys saw that. Yep. All right. All right. So uh, you still uh, have, a, you still have a need at probably dif- di- you know, defensive end, probably right. defensive interior. A lot of people still say that halfback is a need. So you still have a need at running back. Um, I don't see that now. Cause especially if we have Matt Brito. Uh, you also, you also I, have I mean, a I mean, I guess need need at receiver. you probably do have a future need at receiver. We, yeah. You know, yeah. Speaking of uh, um, wide receiver, can you go through? Yeah, uh, let's pull up. We'll pull up receivers. See who's available. Uh, Cornell Powell is your top guy from Clemson. KJ Stefferson from Jacksonville State. Deion Sanders. <laughs> That's right. That's a good one. That's I good don't one. even know that name. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so again, value here. Uh, Cornell Powell probably won't be on the board with your next pick. If you want to take a look at Powell from Clemson, six foot two ten. Uh, age is an issue. Uh, come on, guys. He's he's twenty. He'll be twenty four, right? So an older mm-hmm. rookie, um, with no special teams experience. Yeah, with yeah, with no special teams experience. All right, so there is a uh, wide receiver. Um, I do want to see if they're still there. Okay. Um, there's Newsom. I don't know if he's gone. Oh, Dad, Dad oh yeah, there. he'd be gone. He'd no, Dad, I think Dad is there. No. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. yeah, look all at right, that. Right. They have him ranked at 255. Yeah, but wow. ADP's, at one, ADP's at 165. So. Yeah. You know, he, it's going to get close to him being available at 161 or 174. Yeah. Now, again, if I, you want Newsome, this is the pick to get him at. And I don't think he'll be there at 174. It probably he might not be. Again, it's the mock draft, right? So, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Because, uh, I, Newsom, because, because I know, like, I was talking to Paul, and you're like, hey, if uh, McKenzie doesn't sign, we could still get him, you know, mm-hmm. you know get his replacement there, so. Mm-hmm. Newsom Nuss- is unique. Mm-hmm. Newsom um, has um, is probably more all around receiver with the with the ability to return punts. Um, well, and, and that's an, that's an important thing to talk about, right? It, right now, you have Isaiah McKenzie as your de facto returner, and that's where the conversation kind of stops. Yeah, a lot of these, a lot of the depth this year is slot guys. 
I truly believe, and I think Joe Marino wrote it up in the TDN, that he's more Lavernius Cole's comp, mm-hmm. where he has the inside-outside flex. Mm-hmm. He'll succeed more in the slot, but he does have the ability to play outside. Mm-hmm. Well, 14 broken tackles in three straight years is pretty, um, pretty impressive uh, at any division. I mean, mm-hmm. that's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. And the I, ACC? If you want, I mean, if you want him, Matt, this is probably not, the, not a bad pick to pull that one. Um, I know it's listed as the fifth round. PFF has him listed as a sixth rounder. I disagree with that. I, I, but PFF has think... a tendency to rank guys lower if they have a tendency or if they feel they have a tendency to body catch, which, I mean, slot receivers don't have a lot of times to get their hands out. No. So slot receivers typically get the reputation of body catchers. Like it's just, it, just the nature of the beast there. But PFF does often rank players lower that they feel catch with their body, right. which I understand wholeheartedly. Um, would I say that that's the reason for the 90 pick difference between PFF and ADP? I don't think it's worth 90 overall. That's three <laughs> rounds. I don't think that that is accurate, but if you want Daz Newsome, now's your time to snatch him. Uh, you know what? Yeah. Cause, cause you know what? I mean, cause I mean, to me, it's like Beasley is not going to get any younger. So, I mean, mm-hmm. you might as well find a replacement now. Yep. And I- oh, but, uh, I agree with you. So now we're going to start looking at pick 174. Now there's going to be a pretty big gap here. It's going to be uh, 49 picks, I think, we're going from 174 to 213. So this will be your last player for a little bit. No trade offers, but that doesn't mean we can't trade around if, if you're interested. Um, so PFF tells you, hey, wide receiver, defensive interior, corner is probably your best remaining value according to PFF off their board. I know you had mentioned corner earlier, and just as we thought, they're all still available minus right. one. Right. Shocker. Yeah. Now, you still at this point, you haven't dealt with the defensive end position or the defensive interior. Nope. Um, you have one know... corner. Right. Uh, yeah, like, let's look at the D-line. Yep, so let me bring in – I'll bring in defensive end, and I'll bring in defensive interior. We'll take a look at both of them. Uh, So Jonathan Marshall is your listed top player, although there's a very large difference between ADP and PFF rank. They kind of have him listed a little bit higher. Um, Kando is next at Florida State. uh, And then after that, I like Kando too. Mm -hmm. I do too. And fifth round, pick 30, I think is fair value for him, right? Um, I do like Kando quite a bit. Again, you can't you can't teach him to be six seven two sixty five, right? Like you really right. can't teach anybody to be six seven two sixty five. And at this right, and, and at this no. position, at this at this draft pick, um, Kando's a really nice value. Here's a question. Sure. Because I mean, obviously, like without Star, we I, like we actually knew. Okay, guess what? Star actually is needed. Mm-hmm. So could he play that one tech? No. He's and, too, no, he's not. Yeah, he's, 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 he's too tall for that. Yeah, no, he's too tall he's, he's too light. He, he's strictly an end, mm-hmm. and he's probably more um, of a technician than toolsy, you know, mm-hmm. explosive. Right. Right. You know, if you want the explosive, um, you know, toolsy guy, that's probably more in line of like a Shaka Tony uh, down in this area. Mm-hmm. And Tony probably still on the board. Let's take a look and see. If not, he might have gone in that gap. No, he's yeah, he might, he yeah, might have gone in that because I'm a big Tony fan. Yeah, I like Tony. Uh, it depends on what you're looking for, right? He reminds me so much of Jerry Hughes, like you know, size, uh, you know, split, you know, all that. I mean, coming across the board. I'm, I'm, I'm a big Tony fan. I just want to caution people. If you're a big Jerry Hughes fan, man, don't forget Jerry Hughes is not the prototypical Deshaun or not the prototypical Sean McDermott and uh, Brandon Bean defensive end. Sure. Like, no, the, yeah, I get that. Not the prototype. He, he's the prototype. They like those Trent Murphys. Yeah. Trent they like Murphy. The Kando. Yeah, Kando. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the they, like the, they like Kando. Yeah. 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 That's exactly That's right. That's the prototypical yeah, I mean, guy they like. The, Kando is or, not. Kando is not Kando is not fast enough to get himself in trouble by overcommitting as a defensive mm-hmm. end. 
Yeah. Kando. Man, yeah, we're going Kando. Florida State, Florida State, Florida State. I Man, didn't even I know what like I would Carlos love Williams that. draft. I feel that like would be... Emmanuel yeah. Carlos Williams and uh and uh you know Jack Nicholas's grandson. I feel like this is the same draft. Uh, Nick yeah. Larry. Nick Obata. Of course, uh Williams is still there. Mm-hmm. But sure of course is. I'm not gonna take it. It's like a sore thumb too. Yeah. <laughs> Sure is. Because <laughs> he's right there. And I'm like, oh, I do want him, but I don't think he. Well, I, I, will, I will tell you, if, if they have someone ranked that high on the board and he's. He would be gone. That, Buffalo would be taking him. Buffalo would take it. Wouldn't they would think take twice. him regardless. They, they, They're taking him regardless yeah. and figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and I don't want to, you know, I know Trill Williams has fallen down the board quite a bit. Um, I mean, there are reasons for that. Okay. Right. There are reasons for that. Um, mm-hmm. At Syracuse, if you look at the secondary that they had, what do you do with him, right? He's your least skilled of the corners. That's just the facts. He is your least skilled of the corners. At, in the sixth round, though, right? We're in the sixth? We're in the sixth. I, I could see Ugh. McDermott and team taking them and trying to put them on the practice squad. Yeah. Ooh. Yep. Yeah, and, and I mean, if you go and you take a look at his, um, you you take a look at the positives and negatives, right? He's a pretty decent mirror corner. Hasn't played outside since I think his freshman year. I don't think he played. I think he's played slot for the last couple of years. He's a junior now, so I think the last two years he's primarily played slot. Um, but the fact of the matter is, he was just kind of out there. Right. He was a man on an island. And is he athletic enough to really do it? Yeah, he's super athletic, which is probably why they just kind of let him go out there and just find a guy to cover, man. Just find a guy to cover. And that ultimately hurts his draft profile. Now, is he a great pick here? Well, he might not have a lot of special teams experience, but I guarantee you he'd contribute on special teams. That's a, it's a guarantee. He's too athletic not to be able to. Yeah. I mean, and the thing too is like, we actually coach up these six, seven round draft picks too. And I mean, yep. So it's so it's not like oh well, they're six and seven, like they're just here for camp. No, mm-hmm. we actually coach them up and mm-hmm. do stuff with them. So yeah, just take them before I change my mind. All right, Trill Williams <laughs> is in. Next just pick, take is, them before. Next pick is two thirty six. It's your final pick. Now uh, you have no trade offers here. When you get to the seventh round. I just want to point out that's oftentimes your priority players that you don't want to get to undrafted free agency. Mm-hmm. These are the play. Mm-hmm. The seventh round is often players you're like, I want them. I probably might be able to get them on undrafted free agency, but I don't want to risk it. Right. So are any of these guys mm-hmm. screaming to you? First off, how much fun is it to see you be guys up and down this board. This is the f- third <laughs> yeah. player I've seen so far on this board, which I absolutely love. All right, so let's take a look at another need position, right? We still haven't addressed linebacker at all, right? You avoided the linebacker or the, draft. Or, or, or one tech. Linebacker is available. Buddy Johnson is your top rated linebacker from Texas A&M. Justin Rice from Arkansas State. Riley Cole from South Alabama. Um, you're looking at special teams players across those right. three top players. So um, I, I'm kind of uh, with Mike on this one. Interior defensive seems to make the most sense. I would not go with O'Brien Godson or Goodson. I'm just saying that's, I'm telling you that's not a fit. But when you see a dude is 6'4, 350, now we're talking. Now we're talking. Um, space filler though. This, he is not a pass. He's not a pass rush guy. He is a space nope. filler, but you do Jordan. need that at some point. Give me those two down beats at the late in the round. Yeah. You know, the yeah. biggest strength, first step at his side, mm-hmm. biggest weak, biggest, biggest, biggest weakness is making plays. I'm not sure I need him to make plays. I need him to eat bodies. Yeah. Right. And, and with that, right. So I don't want to guide you too much on this, Matt, but, Sometimes you see really funny stuff like this in scouting reports. Limited closing ability. He's 350 pounds. Yes. <laughs> of course he has limited closing ability. Oh. Like that's the stuff that drives me nuts about scouting reports is of course he's got limited. 
Of course. Did you see? Right. How did you see the weight? Of course, it got limited closing abilities, but oh. it's not a bad value, right? If you're looking no. for a body eater, this could be a guy you could slide down to your practice squad, and no one would think twice about it. No, I'm, no, and plus, like as I mentioned earlier, like you're saying, what star is to this defense, and who knows? I mean, maybe he could turn out to be something. So you might well, as well. Try and pick him up. I mean, well, and to be honest with you, Matt, when when Star was gone, Buffalo did not have a one tech on this roster. No, nope, even though they tried, it, and they did not even try. Right when they brought in Jefferson and Butler, they're like, "Listen, we're going to punt that one tech thing for this season because we just can't. We're not going to be able to do it." Right? They tried to recreate the Jordan Phillips experiment, and it didn't go great. You know, that's what that's I mean, what happened. Right. So you going with uh, with Quinton? Is that going to yes, be your I, pick? Yes, I am, because I did All not right. want to start opt out too I'll, be, I'll be honest, yeah. I don't know much about him, but yeah. that's a big body. Mm -hmm. well, <laughs> well, well, guess what? I don't know anything oh, about look anyone that. outside. Hey, that's B pretty. plus. B plus is not a bad grade for these things. That's um, pretty. I mean, I like course, that draft. You look, you look at, you know, the you look at center. Of course, PFF's going to think you overdrafted the center. Uh, Nazrul Dean, we knew that we overdrafted on Nazrul Dean. Right, like mm -hmm. we yeah. knew that according to their rankings, Daz knew some. We knew according to PFF's rankings, we we're going to get a bad grade on that. But overall, this is a solid draft. Mm -hmm. So let's hit up this mock draft. We'll hit it once more, and we're going to right. same rules. Mike, you are up, and this should be a very fascinating conversation. So first off, before we even get started, nope. Give me a thirty. I'm not moving up. You're staying at thirty. I I am I am team trade down. Ooh. You do not you do so not I, give yes. Well, I want to see what's on the board, obviously, but I, I am more inclined to pick at thirty or trade down than give up assets to move up for. Okay, somebody. so let's talk about let's talk about the the nail biters here, the people that everybody will be talking about. Mm -hmm. Oa, everybody's going to be talking about him, right? Redshirt sophomore, so very underclassed. I am not here I personally right i i'm not i'm not there for oh it's just not my speed a lot of people are going to say that this is what you want i don't find it to be a mcdermott fit a mcdermott and bean fit i don't uh, like it. Reminds, I'm me, uh, reminds me a lot of like the archetype mm -hmm. of um uh hunter out of uh from the vikings mm -hmm. Yeah, Daniel he, Hunter. He, yeah, Daniel Hunter. He is he's that type of player, that type of skill set. However, I'm not sure that's the archetype that Mc, that McDermott and Bean want. Yeah. Also, I don't find value at someone who will play forty percent mm -hmm. uh in rot in a rotation. I agree. At pick thirty when you can get someone who's gonna play at a higher volume at another premium position. I agree wholeheartedly. Uh, Zayvon Collins is another name everybody's going to love. Um, Zayvon Collins to me is a great player uh, if you're grabbing him in the second round, right? I'm very mm -hmm. happy with Zayvon Collins in the second round. I am not happy with Zayvon Collins in the first round. Very good player. I don't see a lot of closing on him. So he always just seems to kind of be a step behind when I watch. So I like him. I like him a lot, but I don't, I don't like him here, right? If I were at 45... I would love Zayvon Collins, but I'm at 30. Mm -hmm. So uh, I like Zayvon Collins a lot. He can do a lot for your football team. I also expect him to be a step behind almost everything. And yep. at 30, I can't afford that. Oh, Landon's still there. I know. Landon Dickinson. Now, mind you, we have the advantage of knowing that Dickinson's probably going to stick around for a few more spots, right? But he's yeah, not you know, I really don't think he's going to be there. No, I think he's, he's going to get 61. No, no, I don't think he's going to make it to 30. I really don't think he's gonna make it to thirty. I um, love Landon Dickinson. I like if he was there at thirty. At thirty, that's a home. I would have a hard him. time to yeah. pass on him. Yeah, I completely um, agree with you. In he's, the mock, he's an in the instant upgrade. Role, this is not gonna grade yeah. well. No, he's he's an instant upgrade at guard mm -hmm. with with the future uh, moving in after Morris's death. Absolutely, Obata. So, so I look at it this um, way: I think you draft who you want. Right. Yep. I don't think you let PFF guide you. If you wanted to jam the system, you'd trade down to 37. I take Landon now. Extra pick. 
yeah, I think if that's if that's the guy you want, I think you yeah. take. I, I think I I think it'd be a home run pick on draft night if we if we were able to land Landon Dickinson. Landon Dickinson at thirty to me is celebratory news. You celebrate mm -hmm. picking Landon Dickinson at thirty. Twitter so. would go on fire just like the Josh Allen pick. Listen, Twitter Twitter would go on fire because they would be like, "See you later, Cody Ford." Right. <laughs> they want to kick Cody Ford to the curb so bad. <laughs> What, what corners are on the board? What corners are on the board? Yeah. Uh, we'll pull up corners. Aaron Robinson, Kelvin Joseph, Tay Gowan. Again, probably a little bit of gap there. You're not going to get him at the next pick. Mm -hmm. Everybody you see on this page will probably not be there in the next yep. pick. And everybody's talking about, let's just talk Eric about. Stokes. Eric Stokes. I, I am not a big Melifano fan. But let's just talk about it, right? So, okay. Melifano gives you something that you don't have, right? Mm -hmm. Length. You do not have big corners on this team, mm -hmm. right? You do not have big corners on this team. So he gives you something you don't have in length. But the question is, do you need it, right? In, again, in Syracuse, I think you're asking – Melifano fits because he's not a press corner. And so many corners in college are press corners. And he's not, right? So, for, yeah. so is he a better fit for McDermott than some of the other corners on the board? Because he's not a press. You don't ask your corners to play press in Buffalo. Is he, is he a better fit just because of the system and his physical tools? Yes. Um, my, my biggest issue with him is what they have on there. He's not physical. Mm -hmm. And in the run game, you've got to come up. He, 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 he's a shoestring shoe tackler. He's yep. a Dion. Let me take out your ankle. He's not coming up to smack you. Mm -hmm. However, can he be, can he be taught? Mm -hmm. So you know. the other name on the board that everybody's going to talk about is Eric Stokes. Oh. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> we'll talk about it. it. It's, it's, it's for the community. Let's talk right. about it. I love it, right? Fast as the day is long, presses everywhere, but that's because he's got the speed to recover. Right, like that's why he's a press. Oh, him up. Is this him? Yeah, this is Stokes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he presses because he can, because he's fast. He keep up with anybody, right? So he presses because he can, not because he's physical. He's grabby, he's quick, but he's never pushing anybody off a route. I didn't right? realize his three-year grades were that high. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, they were. Absolutely, they were. Mm. Gave up three interceptions his entire career at Georgia. Well, that's now, a tough conference. Here's a question I have. Yeah. With him being pushy and grabby and all that good stuff, mm -hmm. could he cover a tight end or no? No. No, he's too yeah, small. He's 6'1", 180, 190 about. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think Bean, Bean would love to get his hands on this guy. I, I, I do. Um, if I had to choose one, I'd probably go with Melifano. I, I think I trust him more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, over Stokes. Stokes, speed, intrigues me. Mm -hmm. Let me see the DMs real quick before I settle in on Melifano. Ooh, all right. Mm -hmm. Melifano might be the guy. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of him, but right. I'm also not blind to what our defense and our coaches like. So big gap here. Right, very big gap between yeah, Peyton no. Turner and yeah. everybody else, which makes sense, right? Houston has kind of been a low key, um, you know, gen they generate decent, they generate decent yeah. defensive linemen, they really do. But if you think about it, the difference between a Kando and a Turner, oh, yeah, no, I take Kando in for six round, seventh round value all day, yeah, exactly. Long. Yeah, when, when we, you know, and I know Bruce Exclusive talks heavily about that, you know, the value. Yep. You know, so from here, I, much as I would literally dislike it, I think the Bills would take Melifano here. Because, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, and you want to, can, let me be perfectly honest. My biggest fear is the same thing that happened with his brother and he flames out. Because mm -hmm. someone that size playing, playing at corner. Well, what are you thinking? 
I think he's, I think he goes Noah Fano, and I, I, you know, I believe our, you know, coaches who are corner whisperers figures out a way to keep him in the league. Yeah. I, you know, I have trouble disagreeing with you there. All right. So that's going to bring us to pick number 93. Are you interested in moving that pick? Are you, do you want to pick up future picks? I, as much, you know, as much as I would love to move it, let's, let's see who's on the board. Show me D tackle first. D tackles. There's forever Milton Williams. Yeah, slide down. I'm looking for, for Big Daddy Sheldon. Oh, Ooh. yeah, no. We're, we're past he, that. Okay, he went. Well, sometimes he falls, sometimes he doesn't. Yeah, you're past Okay. That. Let me bring up the then, tackles again. You know, I, I guess. Because this, I guess. Is, this is the line where you start walking down, I'm going to overdraft somebody, right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, but this is, this is the real life. Like this is, mm-hmm. this is what it's like. So question, why doesn't this pick make sense? 6'2", 280. Don't get me wrong. I get it. He's one of the smallest DTs. In the he's a lighter Shelby Harris. Yeah. He's a three tech. He's a three tech. Mm-hmm. Right. But we need backup three tech. Which is why I'm. Which is why I ask. Why doesn't this pick make sense? Right. Again, you're looking at the. You're at pick ninety. You're at pick ninety one. Mm-hmm. You're not getting a starter here, right? No. You're not. So is this a point where you look at it and say, okay, well, I spent a lot in free agency. These guys, I'm probably not keeping into 2022. When I start looking at Vernon Butler, like 2022 is probably not the year for him. I've got. We don't guarantee Vernon Butler makes this this one. If we yeah, bring this exactly. guy in. There's yeah. no guarantee for about where it makes this. Hundred percent agree with you, right? Just because mm-hmm. you took a pay cut doesn't mean a thing, right? Mm-hmm. So you start looking at how you have to hemorrhage that position, and you protected it with free agents last year. And there's no promise that Harrison Phillips makes your 2022 team, right? Like let's let's just be honest about it. So is this a position where you look at it and say, well, I've got the guys there today, but I probably don't have that same security going into 2022. And I love, make love his first two pros. Mm-hmm. Explosion and speed are pluses. Mm-hmm. Heavy hands allows him to play. And what does McDermott love? That. Explosion and heavy yep. hands. Yep, yeah. exactly. Yep. <laughs> well, that's why <laughs> I asked. Yeah, that's why I asked. Okay. Um, he, de- I could definitely be talked into him. Okay. Um, uh, come back out. Let's see. Um... This Let me is, see tackles really quick before we before we move on. The graveyard of <laughs> offensive tackles in this draft. Okay, uh, are you interested in a tackle from BYU? No, <laughs> you I just want to see who was on the board. Okay, because if Jalen Mayfield has actually to fall here, I think that that would be a good value because he could be a swing tackle. Okay, and he's developmental, and he could actually be a high upside guard. He reminds me a lot of um, Cody Ford. Okay, um, and that's a good thing. Wait, 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 with with better. <laughs> Let me let me let me finish that with better tackle feet. Okay. Obata. Oh, oh, this is a nice one. I have a hard time passing on that. And in, in the rotation that we have, mm-hmm. I mean, you can go with Divine Diablo here, um, mm-hmm. also. Um, but Osa, I just think we, we we need the beef in the first few rounds. We need that beef. Give me all him. right. Give all me right. Him. Right in line with ADP, right in line with PFF's ranking. I agree. Mm-hmm. All right, so big jump now. We're going down to 161. Oh, boy. And yeah. this is where I think McDermott will be looking to move up back up into the fourth for somebody. I really okay. do. Um, for, for Bean, I, I think he'll be looking to package, you know, some of the later picks that will be more depth and practice squad guys. Okay. So looking at what we have, I still have a gap at linebacker. Still have a gap at. Uh, Do you have a gap at linebacker, really? Uh, I think you have a gap at nickel. For yeah. future, and we have we have a gap at future linebacker. Yeah, I think you still. But have I them. but I think they brought in enough depth and, and reasonable guys who can play special teams and fill in. You've lived that life for a long time, man. With Tremaine Edmonds walking into an option that you have yet to pick up, I'd be a little nervous about that. Are you gonna, are you gonna find his replacement in the fifth round? Uh, nope. No. 
I didn't bring it up that you haven't drafted anybody, Mike. I'm not saying that you were supposed to. Just bringing it up. What safeties are on the board here? I love Sherwood. Hamlin's your top one. Um, I, uh, just uh, see, but ha- Hamlin's probably more of a hide. I'm looking for that for that big nickel, and Sherwood from his most recent pro days weighed in. I think it close to like two twenty. Yeah, they, I know they this is mark of six two two twenty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, poor yeah. man, Kyle Duggar. Wow. Oh no! Don't you be saying that word in hashtag nation. Uh, only four missed tackles in 71 attempts this last season. Mm-hmm. Closes. I, I could see him, you know, on, on the radar as our big nickel mm-hmm. um, with, with, the, with the ability to move out and learn under Hyde and Hoyer. So I'm going to say let's go with Sherwood here. Okay. All right. I think that pick makes sense, right? Can contribute on special teams, package mm-hmm. player. All this makes complete and total sense. Obata. All right, so 174 is now on the board. Aaron Banks is still sitting there? Sure is. And wow. Yes, yes, you drafted Landon Dickinson with your first pick. However, there's no... Is, is he sitting there? There's no way they're not taking him. I agree. I agree. 6'6", 330 for those of you keeping score at home. Pass protection nightmare for the opposing defense. This kid can pass protect for days. And if you're and, he, up, and he's a big zone run blocker. Yeah, he's a he's a perfect fit for what you're gonna do today. Is he a perfect fit for what you're gonna do him. with without him? Right? Is he, if you're looking minus Dable, is this pick sexy because you know the offense he's walking into, or is this is this pick one that you're gonna be regretting when you change systems next season? So no, I, I think I think they're going to stay zone, and the reason why is that I was I was listening to a podcast with I can't remember who it was, but they were they were explaining the difference between the zone and the gap mm-hmm. um, calls for Josh. Mm-hmm. They when they went from the gap, there was more you know the, the calls were bigger. Going to the zone, it doesn't change a whole lot, and I think that was one of the bigger differences from 2019 to 2020 and Josh's. Uh, being able to make those to make those checks. Okay. Okay. So I would take Banks here if he was still on the board. Well, he's still on the board, and he's all yours, my friend. Aaron <laughs> yeah, Banks is on the I, books. <laughs> two thirteen. Uh, two picks remaining. Mm-hmm. So we we got it. We got a line. We got corner. We got D tackle. We got big nickel. Mm-hmm. So receiver, we've looked at. Um, we haven't really seen any DN. You know, show me DN. Who's left? Oh, Pat, Patrick Jones is second. Mm-hmm. That that guy. I I am a big big fan of Patrick Jones. Yep. And again, you start talking about you know things that McDermott and and you know Frazier seem to like. Guy coming up, you know, guy is you know ripping around the corner is a weakness. That's totally fine for them, right? Like that's. Mm-hmm. That's that's totally fine. That's something There's that one grade at four. Give me, give me Patrick Jones here. Okay, why? 84. Patrick Jones, you know, his run defense. Like, Patrick Jones was, you know, a month and a half ago was rated, you know, in, you know, late second, early three. Mm-hmm. I, you know, and I, and I feel like, you know, people overanalyze and tend to drop people. Sure. The, the tape speaks for itself. He's, sure. he's not – he doesn't have the quickest first step. But we talked about this early. That's not – what, what, Mc, what McDermott and Dean wants is the DN to push mm-hmm. and then have the pocket, internal pocket clap. Right. Yeah, that's, so, why, oh. that's why I'm not the biggest fan of, you know, the Bills trying to address defensive end early. I was really shocked mm-hmm. when they took Apinesa because – I just, I was like, um, oh, this is a guy that a lot of three, four teams are talking about playing outside linebacker, right? Like it just, it kind of sh- sh- not shocked me, but it was surprising to me that they took best available defensive end, right? Like it was really the first time we could say that they addressed n- like a, gl- it was a glaring need, 
right? Yeah. You had to get younger in the defensive end room. Everybody literally knew it. And it seemed like they were like, well, this is the pick we got to make. Got to take the best defensive end on the board. You know, it was the first time I really saw a chink in the armor as far as you were a victim to the Diggs deal in the draft, right? Which mm-hmm. is fine. I think you accept that mm-hmm. as a Bills fan. There's yeah. no reason to even question that. But I think you fell victim to the draft of losing flexibility. And it was the first time we saw Bean and McDermott say, well, this is where we are. So this is where we're going to have to stay. We don't, we don't have the ability to, to move here. That's, it doesn't get better here. Yeah. All right, All right so, so wide receiver. Yeah. Show, show me the big board real quick. Yep, the big board. Just to see, yeah, just see someone happen to happen to fall. Oh, I I love I love the Penn State guy late. However, knowing we picked uh, Landon in the first, it would make sense to yep. pick him. I agree. I love Lenore. Lenore can he has the ability to play inside outside. Mm-hmm. They look at him more than inside. But um, I think it was – was it Judge Mathis? Maybe, maybe a judge. I know someone over, over at Buffalo Fanatics had an um, interview with him, and he says he has the ability to play both, inside-outside. Uh, well, I mean, really every great. guy says they can play inside-outside. <laughs> but, but he did. He, he played it in the Ducks, in the Ducks um, uh, defense. He played inside-outside. Uh, he, he is a little bit on the smaller side. Um, I think he's like 5'10", 5'11". Mm-hmm. Um, he did. He ran. He ran a four four, so he so he has the speed. But at this point, you know who, who's 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 probably more who's who's more willing to make the team. Probably who has a better chance, a, a slot corner or a big developmental receiver. I mean, you're looking at likely having uh, Hodgins on the roster mm-hmm. or not, right? Like that's, you don't they, know. They loved, him. they loved him in training camp last they year. Sure did. They sure they, did. They've had no reason to, to, to dislike him in any form or fashion. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, you, you need to look at the wide receiver position at some point, right? Like just the same way that you have to look at defensive end, you have to look at the wide receiver and the long-term view of the wide receiver position. And you can get a guy that can help you today, right? But getting a guy that helps you tomorrow is just as valuable. Right? In, in the seventh round, it's just as valuable. And I'm going to take Lenore, and for the reason of we stashed Hodgin last year, and we have yet to see what he does. Okay. And That's the Bills good. don't tend to give up on their draft picks very easily. Okay. Well, 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 unless you're um, Zay Jones, but that's different. Well, they didn't even give up on him. Like, it, it seriously took him not to try to fight for a ball and Josh getting knocked out of a game for them to finally get rid of him. Yeah. That was, a, seri- that was a long series of decisions. Uh, <laughs> was, <laughs> like, I mean, think about it. Like, it, I mean, they gave that guy every chance to succeed right. here. So, Mike, let's see how you did according to PFF. Landon Dickerson at one, which they didn't grade well because they've got him lower. Uh, I would be thrilled with Dickerson at 30. Absolutely. Like it's, I'd be thrilled with Dickerson at 30. Um, everything else looks solid. Sure, would you knew you were stretching out a little bit according to mm-hmm. the grade. Uh, Banks was available, and he would be a phenomenal fit here. Jones would be a solid fit. Uh, Lenore, I don't agree with you on. I just okay. – I, but that's okay. It's seventh round, or whatever. Yeah. Um, uh, whatever to that. Uh, Osa, I think is a is a great pick at ninety three. And right. I will say, yeah. and that's where that's where Bean would turn and tell you know Joe Shane and Dan Morgan and them say, say thanks for the heads up. Wasn't looking at that guy because I'll be perfectly honest. I've looked at a ton of D tackles. I haven't looked at a lot of three techs. Yeah. Most of what I've looked at are one tech. Yeah. And while and while you know one tech is a critical thing. Listen, I know they make fat guys every year, but they don't make one text every year. That's yeah. just the truth. You can get, you can find guys who are space eaters, but mm-hmm. you don't want half of them. Yeah. You know? No, I agree. All right. I, I, yeah, I like it. Beautiful. Excellent job. This was, uh, boys, thank you again for donating so much time to the mock draft. Um, of course, if you guys want, we'll be covering the draft live day one and day two. We've got panels, uh, for both days. So we're really excited about that. So tune it to hashtag. We will be live streaming the draft. Uh, Mike, Matt, excellent job tonight. 
Um, I'll post a mock draft just simply for giggles because Mario hates these. Uh, he, I know. That's why I'm so <laughs> mad that he didn't show up tonight. Uh, just, man, uh, it would have drove him out. crazy to stay here for an hour and a half and have to talk <laughs> mock drafts. <laughs> what do you I see? Think- but the mock drafts are fun because they're an exercise in talking about a lot of players at once. The downside is we, re- we had to realistically embrace the fact that the fifth and sixth round picks, I probably would have packaged to get back into the fourth round. Yeah, right? like, uh, realistically, yeah. it's probably what I would have done. Uh, it, it, we weren't there, right? Like that's just not what we did. So, Hey, I'll post one. We'll have a little fun. And uh, yeah. thank you boys for joining yeah. me. Thanks for having us. It was fun. All right. Have a good one. Good night, guys. All right, guys. later, guys.